Good day, students. So in this video, we're going to talk about solving proportions. Um, so you can see kind of in the corner of the screen, I have a notes page set up. We are going to get to this in like two seconds. No, not two seconds, more like maybe a minute. Um, but first, I want to explain um, using the slide on the screen, the difference between a ratio, a rate and proportion. So you can kind of see what a proportion is and therefore, you know, why we have to like solve proportions. So a proportion, you can tell on um, the last column, is showing two ratios that are equivalent to each other. So a ratio is a comparison of two things that have the same unit. So for example, if I compare dogs and cats, like in a shelter, there are three dogs for every four cats. That's what's known as a ratio. And even though dogs and cats are different like species, they're both the same unit of an animal, right? Like if we were to find a common name for dogs and cats, it would be animal. Um, a rate, on the other hand, compares things that have different units. So for example, if you're driving a car and going 70 miles per hour, miles and hours, while they're units of measurement, one is a measurement of distance, right? Miles. And then one is a measurement of time, hours. So there's not really a way you can find a common name for those two things. Um, they both measure something, but they are both measuring two different units of things. Um, so when we're given a particular rate or ratio and we're trying to compare it to a similar rate or ratio, like for example, okay, if there are three dogs to four cats in the shelter, um, what if there are 16 cats? How many dogs are there? That would be a question of solving a proportion. So, for example, on the example they give you on the slide, you know, if one pound is 16 ounces, well, then how many ounces are in three pounds? And so the way that we can write ratios and proportions, you'll see um, on kind of all these columns, we can write them as fractions. That's going to be the most common way that we're going to write. Um, kind of set it up. Uh, you can use the colon symbol, the two dots in between the numbers. You could just write the word two, T-O. Um, but the most common way we're going to do it is we're going to write it like fractions. This is just going to make our math a little bit easier to visualize and complete. Okay. So in this video, we're going to look at um, how would we solve a proportion? If we're given some sort of ratio or a rate, how can we figure out the missing piece of another ratio or rate of comparison of the same thing? Um, <clears throat> And so our problems are going to kind of look similar to this, mainly the first one. So if three over nine is equal to X over 27, what would the value of X be? And so you can think about these problems like fractions. However, in this case, the fraction bar is not meaning these numbers are being divided. It's just kind of separating out the two things like three cats to nine dogs. So how many cats to how many dogs? It's just a notation, a way of writing versus actually showing division. OK, so let's get to our notes um, so we can see how we are going to be solving proportions. So there's two different methods for how we solve proportions. So what I need you to do is um, basically split your page into two columns. We're going to title one column cross multiply and the other column cross roads, which is going to mean rows like rows. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to go ahead and set up those two columns and then write down, um, it's the same example. I'm also color coding. If you like to color code, I'm doing cross multiply in blue and cross roads in red. If you wanna do two different colors to help you remember, that's also fine. Um, we're gonna do the same problem twice and the I'm gonna show you the two different methods. So go ahead and pause and copy this down if you haven't already done so. Okay, so. Um, they didn't give us any sort of context for these proportions, but we can use the cats and dogs example. Um, so let's say, for instance, there are four cats for every five dogs in the shelter. So if there are 24 cats, how many dogs would there be? That's kind of a question, like a word problem we could associate with a proportion like this. So there's two methods. The first method, the easiest method um, is crossroads. And sometimes crossroads is possible and sometimes it's not. So what crossroads means is we are going to look across the row. So essentially from like numerator to numerator and denominator to denominator. And we are going to see how is the ratio increasing or decreasing. Now, proportional 
um, means that everything is happening at the same rate. So that means we're either going to be using multiplication or division. Okay. Because when we multiply something by two, um, you know, in a sense with any kind of number, we're doubling it. Right. But if we subtract by two, the rate is not decreasing at the same amount. Um, another way I can describe it is like, if you've ever like copy and pasted an image from like Google into a document and you wanna make it either bigger or smaller, you have to drag and drop at like the corner right? To make it bigger or smaller and keep the proportions of the image the same. Because if you don't, if you move kind of like the length or the width, it's going to either make the image like very distorted. It could make it look like really chunky looking. It could make it look really skinny. Um, so you kind of drag and drop at the corner. So that way the length and width are being moved at the same like proportional rate to keep all of the proportions in your image the same. So when we're doing math, <laughs> going back to math here, um, we are going to be increasing and decreasing um, our proportions or our ratios by the same amount. So if I look across, I'm going to kind of start on this side first. If I'm going from 4 to 24, well, I know I'm increasing, and I know that I'm increasing by 6. So I know that 4 times 6 equals 24. Well, similarly to if this was a fraction, I want to make sure that the denominator increases at the same rate. So if I want to make sure that this proportion is proportional to four fifths, I'm going to increase five by six. So in doing this, uh, five times six is equal to 30, which means that X is equal to 30. If we use the cat and dog example, um, you know, if there's four cats for every five dogs. Well, if there's 24 cats and that means there's 30 dogs if we keep that proportion the same. Um, <clears throat> so if it's possible to find a factor that increases or decreases, use the crossroads method. That's like the easiest thing. Um, however, if it's not possible um, or if you just want to try a different way, um, I'll show you a way where it's not really possible to use crossroads. Um, <clears throat> We can use a method called cross multiply. So when we cross multiply, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to multiply diagonally the values in the proportion and kind of set up an equation that doesn't have a fraction and then solve using our pose. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply four times X and set it equivalent to five times 24. So um, four times X is four X. 5 times 24 is 120. So I kind of have this equation now. 4 times x is equivalent to 5 times 24, which is the same as 120. Kind of what we did is we just did MPO. We multiplied both sides, not necessarily by the same thing, but we multiplied both sides by what the bottom part or the second piece of the proportion is. That's another way to think about it if you really want. Um <clears throat> And so if I have this equation, if I want to solve for X, I'm just going to use what I know about solving equations, which are my properties of equality. So 4X means 4 times X. So I'm going to use that division property of equality, my depot to solve. So X, in this case, 120 divided by 4 is also 30, which is what we got before. So for this example, it was much easier and more efficient to do crossroads. Um, however, you can solve it this way where you set up an equation to solve using what's known as cross multiply because think about it like you're making a big X or like a crisscross um, and you're multiplying like the numerator and denominator of the diagonal pieces of the proportion. Okay. Let's look at some that are a little more complex. So you can go ahead and draw like a line if you want and then write these two other examples. So um, the first one, let's do the, let's do cross multiply again. Um, so we have the problem nine out of 10 is equivalent to X out of 19. Um, so if you look, so nine out of X, like I can't, if I want to try cross rows um, or cross roads, whichever way you prefer to say it, um, I don't know what X is. So I don't know what kind of increasing or decreasing situ situations going on here. And then if I look from 10 to 19, I know I'm increasing, but since I have to increase or decrease by multiplication or division, kind of like if I was like simplifying or making an equivalent fraction, there's not a whole number that I can multiply by 10 to make 19. Like it's going to be some sort of like 
bigger number, right? So instead of like doing 19 divided by 10 and then multiplying that, like instead of doing that method, which you could do, it's just a lot of extra work. I'm just going to do the cross multiply method and set up an equation. So I'm going to do 10 times X and then 19 times nine and set up an equation. So 10 times X is 10 X. And then 19 times nine, if we did that math is 171. So you have 10 X equals 171. And it doesn't matter. Like I could put 10 X on this side and 171 on this side. It really doesn't matter. I prefer to put it on the uh, left-hand side because when we solve for X, we traditionally have X on the left-hand side, but it's up to you. Um, okay, so now I'm just gonna solve. 10 times X you know, means multiplication. So I'm gonna use division or the depot property to solve. Um, so 10 divided by 10 is just going to be X and then 171 divided by 10 is not going to be a whole number. If I put it as a decimal, it's going to be 17.1. Basically I'm moving my decimal in one spot. So X in this case is 17.1. And all I did was multiply across diagonally and then solved for X. Um, <clears throat> so if this was like, I don't know if this was some sort of measurement. If you need nine cups of sugar for every 10 cups of flour and a recipe, if you have 19 cups of flour, how many cups of sugar do you need? You would need 17 and one tenth a cup of sugar to keep like the same taste of whatever it is that you're making that has flour and sugar. Okay. Let's look at one more example of cross roads, but this one has a decimal. Um, so bear in mind, these are not fractions, right? So typically with fractions, we don't have decimals involved with them. These are a proportion. Okay. So this could say something, I'm just going to go back to the food recipe. If you need 3.6, um, cups of sugar for 12 cups of flour, and you want to like decrease your recipe and you only want to have two, you only have two cups of flour, you know, how many cups of sugar do you need to make, you know, whatever it is you're making that has flour and sugar again. Um, <clears throat> so if I look across between 3.6 and X, like we don't know what X is. So the only two numbers I can really look for and find a relationship for are 12 and two, 12 to two is decreasing, which means I'm going to use division um, and 12 divided by six equals two. And if you didn't know, like, how do I get from 12 to two? What do I divide by? You could just divide by two to figure out what it is. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing up top to keep everything equivalent. So 3.6 divided by six is going to tell me um, what X is going to be. So 3.6 divided by six, you can kind of think about it like 36 divided by six is going to equal 0. 0.6 or six tenths. So X is equal to six tenths. Um, so if this was some sort of recipe, we would need six tenths, a cup of sugar and two cups of flour to make, I don't know, a smaller batch of cookies or whatever it is that we're making. So the first thing I would, I would always do when you're solving a proportion is look cross rows to see if there's a very easy kind of factor you could increase or decrease by, and then just solve for the missing piece that way. If there's not a very obvious factor, meaning it's going to be like a decimal or something, I would use cross multiply. Um, and in that case, you might still end up with a decimal or a fraction answer. Um, however, However, the actual math part of it, you're just simply solving a one-step equation in order to figure it out. The other piece of advice I'm going to leave you before I give you practice questions is sometimes uh, in proportions, it's not just necessarily like a number. So if you're multiplying by a group like X plus three, you cannot forget the distributive property. Okay. So I'll show you in a moment in your practice questions, what that looks like. Um, that is basically going to make your, um, that's basically going to make your cross multiply equation that you set up. It's going to make it probably a two-step equation. That's the only kind of difference, but those problems are a little bit more complex. So don't forget if you're like cross multiplying and one of the um, things in the proportion is a group, like it has parentheses, you're going to need to distribute. So let me show you the practice question so you can make a little bit of sense of what I mean. So you have three practice questions. You're going to solve three proportions. Um, so the first two are pretty straight forward. Um, you have four over eight equals X over 96. The second one, it has negatives, but because the negatives are on both sides already, um, it's kind of like, you don't really even have to worry about it. Um, if one of them didn't have a negative, like if this X didn't have a negative, then yes, you would have to use your integer rules, but because they both have a negative, like 
don't stress out about this one. You would just solve this one almost as if they were both positive. Um, so you have this problem. And then the last problem, this is what I mean. What if, um, you know, if three cats, no, not three cats, sorry. If like a number of cats plus two is the number of cats in the shelter for every six, you know, if there's four cats, 30 dogs, like what is this missing piece basically? Um, that wasn't necessarily the best verbal example, but I was trying to just give you it on the spot. So in this case, you're going to have to, you can look crossroads and then kind of figure it out. My suggestion is to solve this one by doing cross multiplication. And when you multiply this 30 times this group, okay, I would suggest writing it with parentheses to help you remember. Um, you're going to have to multiply that 30 times X and that 30 times two, and then solve the equation that's equivalent to when you cross multiply on that side. So all the answers to these are in the table of contents. So you can check your work. If you're a little bit stuck on number three in particular, please ask your teacher or fellow table mates to kind of help you out. Um, as always, uh, ask us if you have questions and um, I will see you in the next video. Everybody have a good day. Bye.